everyone, welcome back to the Keep Watching Podcast, where we decide what to watch so you don't have to. I'm Sarah. And I'm James. And today, we're going to be talking about Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso, season three, episode one, Sarah. Season yes. three came out today, or episode one of <laughs> season three came out today. And um, we just wanted to talk about Ted Lasso. <laughs> yeah. There was at least one person who wanted to hear us <laughs> talk about Ted Lasso, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but not the overwhelming amount of people That's in our right. audience but don't worry if you're checking out this episode and you're a transit love fan we will be doing more transit love don't worry about that yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah. we just really love ted lasso and had to talk about it <laughs> we both agreed we just want to talk about this uh, because we have not done any ted lasso content even though we've referenced it in other episodes we have not had a single episode dedicated to ted lasso so since season three came out today, this is our chance to do it. So we're doing yep. it. That's that's where we are. Yep. Sarah. Yes. I wanted to ask you a question. <laughs> okay. Do you feel like there is a show out there that, like, when you watch it, it feels like it was just, like, made for you? Like, uh, like yeah. you were the target audience of this show. Somehow, for me, it is this show. It, okay, it's this show. Okay. <laughs> Even though I, I am not a sports person, I... I do not know anything about soccer. I know less than Ted knows about soccer when this show starts. But I love this show so much. It is, it is like a warm hug on a cold day, and it makes me happy. Yeah. I almost want to say that for this show. Also, other than the fact that, like, the show has so many, like, references in it that, like, I don't get all of them. Mm. <laughs> so it almost feels like it's maybe more targeted to people that are, like, pop culture, like, experts. Uh, yeah, like and, uh -huh. and like deep like historical hot pop culture uh, references. <laughs> so people that are like maybe more like Jeopardy wizards or whatever might actually get <laughs> more jokes in the show than I do. But other than that, I do feel like at least in the category of like fictional TV, mm -hmm. uh, this is probably more than any other show feels like it was made for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to enjoy. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, should I give a? We do this in our other episodes should i give a wiki breakdown of ted lasso in case anybody's listening to this that hasn't watched it you want to do that yes let's okay. do it ted lasso is or was an american fo football coach and he is unexpectedly recruited to coach a fictional english premier league soccer team called afc richmond despite having no experience coaching soccer amazing premise already yes <laughs> i believe this is a, like <laughs> the premise for this stemmed off like some like dumb like, it like was super bowl commercial i don't i don't know if it was super bowl it was like one of those sports channels like espn like had a commercial for one of their shows and it was literally i think it was a commercial for the nfl because they were like maybe having games in london for the first time oh yeah i think i kind of remember that being a thing but like it's Something literally like jason sudeikis in these in these commercials. Yeah, who plays Ted Lasso once this commercial years later became a TV show somehow. <laughs> and it is is basically that exact premise of a, an American football coach trying to teach <laughs> soccer or coach soccer and not knowing any of the rules. <laughs> yeah. and it is silly. But that I feel like because I went back and we watched all of those commercials at some point and that is less wholesome than the show is yeah so it does not quite hit they the mark of the vibe of the show. show yeah yeah but that being its starting point is hilarious if you saw the commercials and then we're like oh they made a tv show of these commercials you're like oh this is probably like a very silly stupid comedy mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's like way more than that <laughs> somehow yeah. there's more to this wiki so i'll continue the team's owner the team that ted is going to be the coach of uh, mm -hmm. is named rebecca welton she hires Ted, hoping he will fail as a means of exacting revenge on the team's previous owner, who is her unfaithful husband named Rupert, I believe is his name. Yes. And then, <laughs> however, Ted's charm, personality, and humor begin to win over Rebecca, the team, and those who have been skeptical about his appointment <laughs> to the team. So it uh, starts silly and gets super funny and... Uh, yeah wholesome basically so it's like basically the first season is like this super cheerful guy making the best of a weird situation and a bunch of people who are really skeptical and snarky about the whole thing and he just gradually makes them all better 
Yeah. They all just become nicer, better people. <laughs> yeah. And it's so amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So good. Do you have any way that you want to describe Ted Lasso more than what you've said so far? I mean, it's your favorite show. What, it is what, my favorite what, show. How, why is it your favorite show? Well, okay. So part of it is it came out at a perfect time, right? It came out, what, in 2020 when we were all stuck at home and the world was on fire and everything was terrible. And then it was just this little morsel of wholesome goodness. And it's funny <laughs> and it's sweet. And it's like all the people act like adults. You know, yes. there's none of those ridiculous, um, like, romantic comedy situations where they're just about to break up because they're not communicating. Like, everybody communicates, and they work through their problems. And yeah. it's just nice. That's what I love about about the show. It's like, most, it, it's, the show's, what, mostly a comedy, you would say? Yeah. And I, I tend to gravitate towards comedy when it comes to fictional content. Because, to me, a lot of times in, in drama shows like i just find the reason that like two characters have a conflict with each other i find it like annoying like they like you said like they're just not communicating with each other so like they just mm -hmm. have beef with each other for some reason and it's like right. something that it's like oh watching adults behave like children and that's like the reason that they're having conflict is not really interesting to me <laughs> yeah as a concept mm -hmm. which i feel like is a large amount of drama tv at least from <laughs> That's my perspective of it, obviously. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But in this show, it's like, if two characters have beef with each other, more often than not, within like one episode or two episodes, they talk like adults and resolve their issue. It's like pretty awesome yep. to watch. It's so good. Yeah. With some exceptions that mm -hmm. we can get into as we reminisce about the first two seasons of the show. Rebecca's ex-husband never gets better. He is okay, the, but he's like the villain. The, He's yeah. like a mustache twirlingly evil villain. So yeah. like it makes sense that he never gets better. But he's like consistent, you know. I'm more talking about mm -hmm. like when a sh when a drama show is like, hey, these are characters you're supposed to like, and now they have like beef with each other, and mm -hmm. <laughs> like that's they're you know, throwing get, a tantrum. I can get behind, you know, somebody is a villain, and they're always going to be the villain, and that's their purpose on the show. Like that, that's mm -hmm. I'm fine with that, you know. <laughs> right. It's just like if I'm supposed to like somebody, and then I. They appear like they're behaving like a child. Like now, I don't really like them, and that's that's where yeah. the shows lose me. But yeah, I think I agree. This is the greatest fictional TV show of all time. In my <laughs> in my opinion, I'm not going to say it's better than Survivor. I won't say that. Of course, of course. <laughs> Maybe some other reality TV shows. I'd have to. It's hard, almost hard to compare. Mm -hmm. The characters on this show, even outside of Ted Lasso, though, Sarah. Maybe yes. maybe some of the best fictional TV characters of all time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Roy Kent's amazing. Yeah. Ted Lasso, <laughs> Rebecca, Roy Kent, and Keeley, to name a few. Those are probably like the top four, right? Mm hmm Yeah. I'll have some things to say about Jamie Tart when we get to him in this episode. <laughs> yeah, of course. Because my opinions on him have changed. As they were supposed to. Not yeah. not over time, but even through like re watching the show, because I've watched the mm. show. I've watched the first two seasons okay. more than once. Yeah, same. And my opinions changed of him just like in between watching the shows. Okay. Uh, or my viewings of the show, yeah. And the show has, in the last two years that it's been out, has won, done very well at the Emmys, the Emmy Awards. Sir. Oh, yeah. I remember paying attention two years ago, and two years ago it won for, they call it Outstanding Comedy Series, basically like it won Best Comedy Series. <laughs> I don't know, that's mm -hmm. what they call the categories, Outstanding. Uh, yeah. Ted Lasso won that. And then Jason Sudeikis won Best Leading Actor in a Comedy Series. And then Brent Goldstein, who plays Roy Kent, won mm -hmm. Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series. Okay. And Hannah Waddingham, if I'm pronouncing that right, who plays Rebecca, won Best Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series. So they basically won everything they could have won. <laughs> you yeah. Know, mm -hmm. Ted is the lead role, so there was no actress that could win the lead role. At least from an acting standpoint, did they win? I don't know if they won any writing, like, or what the other, I guess the best overall series is your writing one, right? I don't know. I don't know all the categories. I don't watch these shows. Yeah, no, there is directing and writing, uh, which doesn't look like they won that year. But in terms of just characters and the show itself, mm -hmm. they basically yeah. swept everything they could have two years ago. Yeah. And then I didn't pay attention last year, but they actually won best comedy again. Oh, <laughs> in nice 2022 mm -hmm. and jason sudeikis won best leading actor again in mm -hmm. 2022 and 
Brett Goldstein, aka Roy Kent, won Best Supporting Actor again for a comedy series in 2022. Nice. So they 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 those three have won back to back. But then Rebecca's character got beat out by Cheryl Lee Ralph, who plays Barbara Howard on Albert Elementary, which is another show we uh, love. So that's fair. That is an excellent show. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, allow that's it. It's an acceptable, <laughs> <laughs> acceptable uh, beating a Ted Lasso show. So, mm -hmm. yeah, the show's crushing it, basically, in terms yes, of should. like, you know, the high level <laughs> critics of the, <laughs> mm -hmm. the, the TV world. But, oh, it did. Ted Lasso did win a directing the best directing of a comedy series last oh, year. There you go. Yeah, there you go. So if you haven't watched the show, hopefully maybe you just stop here and go watch the show. Cause we're about to really dive deep into <laughs> the first two seasons, probably as we recap the first episode of season three. Yeah. Um. So if you don't want to be spoiled and this show seems like maybe we've hyped it up enough. <laughs> oh, experience uh, the joy for yourself. yourself. It, unfortunately, Sarah, <laughs> the yes. show is on Apple TV plus. Which is your nemesis. Which but, is a garbage streaming service. But but it's so good <laughs> that you'll put up with the garbage streaming service to watch it, right? The only upside to Apple TV Plus is that, like, they don't have an ad option. So, mm -hmm. like, it's it might be, like, $7 now. But that's, like, the only option. Yeah. And there's no ads. So mm -hmm. it's relatively cheap compared to other streaming services. Because other ones you, yeah. like, they might start at $7, but then you have to pay more if you want no ads. So, mm hmm Maybe they are aware that they're a garbage streaming service and <laughs> are willing to take less money uh, for it. <laughs> okay, okay. No joke, Sarah. Can I, can I just mm -hmm. can I just complain about Apple TV? Plus Go ahead. Let me hear it. So they fucking got me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I resubscribe, right? And then okay. I go on and I'm like, <laughs> they have a fucking drop down. <laughs> This might they just like aren't compatible with Chrome or some shit, which is why I hate them. So uh -huh. like they have a drop down for like which season you want to watch. And then I'm like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I'll click season three. Every time I click season three, the drop down switches to season two. <laughs> oh. And then after like clicking the drop down several times and being like, what the fuck is happening? I realized that like the slider for the episodes was actually like sliding to season three, but since there's only one episode. It was like uh, keeping the 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 overall wi widget or whatever the fuck I was looking at. Like it felt like it was still in season two, so okay, it, it had it was showing four episodes and it was like the last two episodes of season two and then the first two episodes of season three. So then I text Sarah because I'm like, oh Sarah, look, there's two episodes out of season three <laughs> on the first day because they show that there's two episodes out <laughs> in mm -hmm. this little widget thing. And then you're like, no, on mine it says there's only one. And then I click on to like see if it's possible to watch season two. And it's like, oh, don't worry. This episode's not coming out till next week. And I'm like, oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Apple TV Plus. <laughs> they want you to know that there's going to be more. I, I will just say <laughs> that the experience of Apple TV Plus is a lot smoother on an Apple TV device or if I, yeah. I use the app on my laptop. If you give all your money to Apple, for all then the devices, smooth. then it it's works absolutely perfectly true. Yep. well. Yep, the <laughs> ecosystem works. Outside of that, it's That's yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's fucking, a little messy. Fucking garbage. <laughs> but all of that. But they have the best TV show it. of all time in the fictional category. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> maybe if you're not podcasting about Ted Lasso, maybe you just like find a different way to watch it. But. Um... <laughs> Not saying I would do such a thing. But. Of course, we do not support <laughs> such nonsense. We're legit upstanding <laughs> citizens. Thank you very much. But if you were going to, I mean, Apple TV Plus is probably the one to <laughs> do it for. <laughs> All right, where are we at? Wait, do you want to dive into episode one and then episode one of season three and see what happens? Uh, you want to talk about where we left yes. off? The major, where, where do we, yeah, let's do that. Where do we okay. leave off at the end of season two, Sarah? What, well, what are we okay, thinking first about? Of all, what, what just happened? I mean, Coming in to like the world of Ted Lasso, there might be some sport ball things that might need explaining, which is that okay, sure. In football, there are leagues, right? There's there's a the Premier League, and then there's the less Premier League. What's the one below it? Uh, Champions League, I believe, is the like B League. You okay, actually knew so about this shit before I did because you watched that documentary. Oh yeah, I didn't know about, how deep um, it went, but it's like yeah, there's like several tiers of leagues that all connect to each other. 
Yeah, but they're all they are all ranked, and it is important which one you're in. And so coming in to the first season of Ted Lasso, this team, AFC Richmond, is in the second tier. The last season, they got demoted from the good tier. They're in the B tier now. And so everyone's sad. And so yes. the goal is get back up to the good tier. Doesn't happen season one. But, you know, that's okay. When season, season, two, season one, they get rele- relegated to the B tier. Oh, is that how it starts off? Yeah, because Jamie Jamie leaves the team, goes plays for Man City, oh, that's and right. then they play them in the last game, and he like scores the winning goal that relegates them to the. To the I literally Champions mixed League. up the football in this show with the football in that documentary you were just talking okay. About. Okay, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they were in the fancy tier. They did not do well enough that the first season that Ted is the coach, and so they get put down in the B tier. Okay, that's the big overall arching thing from season one. Yes. In season two, they crawl their way back and they get back into the A tier. The Premier League. And so that's where we're yeah. going to start now. Yeah. They also, season two had some like head emotional arcs of he's having a rough time, even though he's the, you know, smiley, lighthearted guy that, you know, gives everybody uh, good vibes all the time. He's got his own shit he's dealing with. So we've got an emotional Rocky Ted going on right now. Yeah. All that stuff I didn't really remember until Je- Ted like makes a joke about it at the end of this. Yeah, it's not like we're, the show didn't really start with that aspect, but yeah, that was a big thing. I mean, the two. show literally starts with sad Ted face, but okay, it does. This episode, but... <laughs> yeah, but it's like it for a different reason. But yeah, that's true. Okay, that's what you remember as the leave off of season two. I wasn't I even mean... gonna mention all that stuff, but I, yeah, it is like okay in terms of the story of the team that is important, but. In terms of the characters on the show. On top of that, there had been a um, what, uh, sports water boy. What, 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 is, what was Nate? He was a... Nate? They yeah. call him a, like a kit man or something? Yes. It's like a, a team assistant guy yeah, it's who a football takes care term. of the laundry and whatever. And Yeah. During season one, Ted pulled him up to be a coach, and it was great. And he was, like, mentoring him. And then over the course of season two, things soured without Ted noticing. And at the very end, Wolf Nate does a heel turn and goes and becomes evil and goes to coach a different team, which is now owned by Rebecca's ex-husband. So that is also important going into this season. Which I thought was Man City, but it actually ends up being um, West West Ham. West Ham is the name of this this other team. Yes. Yeah, Nate's story arc in the first season, well, specifically the second season is when he's like kind of turning heel. Was like the one aspect of the show that I felt like they went away from their like, we're going to resolve our problems quickly when like characters have Mm -hmm. problems. And this one was like allowed to snowball into something that I was kind of like annoyed by. Mm -hmm. Less so when I went back and watched it again, but it makes sense in terms of like the story of the show. It's like, okay, they want it to like get Nate off the team and on another team for the sake of like the drama of the show. But not a huge fan of how he got there. <laughs> I felt like yeah. it was like they were trying to make some sort of statement about how like social media and how it affects people because he kind of like misspeaks one time and then people start kind of teasing him about it online and then it kind of like snowballs out of control. Yeah, but that was just like part of the whole reason. Part of it, yeah. also like the way his father treats him and how he has no confidence and just it, there's a lot of little factors that have bubbled up into. Oh no, he went evil. Yeah, I I don't think it totally makes sense. There there are some elements of it when we can talk about Nate later. I can get we can get into it, but um, mm-hmm. there's some elements that I was fine with, and some elements that I wasn't really buying. Like it just felt like forced dramatic turn, you yeah. know, kind of deal. But mm-hmm. it's like the one part of the show that I took issue with in t- two whole seasons. So, <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah, the show's doing a good job, <laughs> and it's still a good starting point for season three that he's on another team. It's just. How we got yeah. there, yeah, it wasn't mm-hmm. my favorite, yeah. Yeah, yeah, fair. Okay. You still haven't got to the main thing that I was remembering at the end of the season. Though. Okay, okay. Which main thing are we talking about? The main thing I was remembering was, I guess, Nate, Nate, the Nate heel turn was the big, like, ending moment of season two. So that one was mm-hmm. big. I didn't remember that. I didn't remember, like, necessarily all the steps, but yeah. The other big thing was the relationship between Roy and Keeley on the show. Uh, well, it was like... left in an unclear, vague state. Exactly. Yeah. That is that is what I wanted to say. Like, 
how did where did you think the relationship was left left off in season two? I mean, it definitely felt like they were breaking up. Is okay. But, yeah. I I okay. I felt like it was kind of out of left field and dumb. It was like okay. one of those moments, and I was hoping that it was like kind of just like a. They just wanted to have like an extra little bit of a cliffhanger mm. at the end of the season. I was hoping that like this was one an issue that would resolve itself quickly. It did feel weird because like in part of the season, like they seemed to be having troubles and then they did like just talk about it and exactly. seem to work things out. But then the troubles persisted or changed or whatever. And what the things went unspoken and now, and now things don't yeah. look so good for them. We'll get to the end of the episode and then maybe we can hash through mm-hmm. what, either why we like it or, I mean, you're not going to like it, but you know, <laughs> why we buy it or don't buy it kind of thing. Yeah. And I think mm-hmm. it's, I think it's the way the scene kind of goes down at the end of this episode. I think it's, interesting and worth talking about yeah but yeah i would say those are the main the main character points Mm -hmm. i don't i wouldn't say i know exactly where ted left off last season like where was he at mentally i think he was really um like the nate heel turn like shook him because like nate largely blamed it on him like he he had just stopped noticing him and stopped like shining his light on him unjustly i would say but yeah um, yeah yeah but like Ted feels like he failed him in a huge way. And I think that and like he's, you know, he's having a rough time because he has a kid back in the States and like he has recently divorced his wife. Like that happened in season two or it was it was always happening in the show. Like but like the actual finality of it, I think, happened in season two. Yeah. And he was working with um, they had a sports therapist who uh, came in and worked with the team in season two. And he actually like. A big part of that was him opening up and being able to talk to her. And he was starting to face some of his, like, issues while he was having panic attacks and just having a rough time. So there's, like, a upward trajectory of willingness to deal with mental health, but also a lot of extra things, like, that are, like, pressuring him now. So I think he's bummed is, is the you So you think he was, like, actually <laughs> still more bummed than anything at the end of season two? Yeah, I think the Nate thing hit him pretty hard. Okay. Yeah, I guess to me it was, like, yeah, I guess I guess that's... Ted's character is to like take that as a failure and take it personally. Mm-hmm. Like even though they won and made it up to the yeah. next league or whatever, like the people are more important to him. Yeah, I guess it's just because we saw Nate's point of view of his mm-hmm. progression and that the fact that like I didn't really buy it, I was like, ah, this isn't Ted's fault. Who cares? Like that's like my <laughs> that's my take on watching it all play out. Right. But I guess like it it is consistent with Ted's character for him to take that personally. Mm-hmm. Even though in my point of view, like, he didn't do anything wrong kind of thing. But... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I don't think he, you know, is to blame for this either. Yeah. Okay. Let's get into the episode one of okay. season three. Let's do it. All right. We open on... Sad Ted face. Ted is in an airport, <laughs> yeah. Is he... He looks disheveled. I wouldn't necessarily say, like, oh, for sure he's sad, but he looks like... He's just, like, not yeah. clean-shaven like he normally is. Mm-hmm. But it's yeah. kind of a fake-out because... The reason he's actually at the airport is like he's like with his kid waiting for him to get ready to go on a plane back to the States. Yeah, because it had been the off season and also like summertime. So his kid wasn't in school. So he came to visit for a few weeks and this is him sending him off. Yeah, but you could just be like, oh, well, like Ted was busy with his kid. So he like, you know, didn't worry about shaving <laughs> like oh, yeah, every day yeah. like he normally does. Like it didn't, mm-hmm. it, it I couldn't tell if the show was like, trying to make us feel like Ted was sad, but then in reality, like, oh, okay. Then they quickly just played it off. Like, I mean, he, he definitely oh, is this still sense. sad. He can be just, you can be not clean shaven in this scenario yeah. and it's not actually a big deal. I don't know. It looked like I he, think he... I noticed <laughs> the sad more than the disheveled. Really. Okay. Like, okay. To me, yeah. I mean, if you just sit in the airport waiting, <laughs> it's just a face. I mean, is there a sadder place than the airport waiting for a plane? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I didn't read too much into it. <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, you're probably right. That's probably how the show wants us to feel. <laughs> but then this is this is kind of interesting. I have <laughs> it wasn't until I watched through this the second time that I actually was like, wait, this doesn't make any sense. But uh-huh. basically, te- uh, Ted is looking at his phone, and he get a, mm-hmm. he gets a text, and the text is from Michelle Lasso, who his is ex-wife. his ex-wife, yeah. and it says like, "Have a safe flight. I love you. I love you. Yeah." And it feels like a big deal because, you know, like, they're, Ted's wife is not saying I love you to Ted at the end of season two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. 
but then they're getting called up to board the plane and then ted gives the phone back to his kid and is like oh your mom just texted you mm. yeah, yeah, yeah so it's like oh this is the son's phone and she was texting the son but he like read the message that would mess yeah, I wasn't sure if it was the son's phone or if she just texts the son through Ted's phone because the kid isn't old enough to have a phone yet or something. But either oh, way. Oh, that would make more sense because I had an issue with this. <laughs> <laughs> an issue I... with him holding the kid's phone? <laughs> so, well, I thought it, I thought he was giving his phone, like the kid's phone, back to him. Mm -hmm. But it didn't it doesn't actually make any sense that the kid has his contact saved as Michelle Lasso. <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's definitely Ted's phone. <laughs> so you... Okay. That's a little hard to follow. <laughs> okay. I, think you're, I think you're right. Like, it's Ted's uh -huh. phone, and we're supposed to infer that it was a text meant for the kid, but through Ted's phone. I, that's a little yeah. hard to track, I think. Okay. <laughs> they might have... Well, I mean, the kid's young. The How old is the kid? Like, eight? Like, shit. An I'm not saying it doesn't phones? make sense, but in terms of, like, you're watching it as an like an audience watching this moment, and you're supposed to, like, first time you're watching it, fully understand what you just saw. It's mm -hmm. a little... Okay. <laughs> I don't know. It seems like a little much. I think okay. we talked it through it and figured it out. I mean, maybe. I guess you had, <laughs> you had it from the start, but okay. <laughs> I still was like, why is the son's phone... <laughs> contact <laughs> why is his mom's contact listed as michelle Lasso? so that makes no sense <laughs> they just have a very formal relationship you know it's fine yeah before we continue for some reason i wrote this down now oh because the kid they're gonna have like a cute moment where like the kid basically is like he's happy for his dad and like wants him to stay and win the premier league basically mm -hmm. yeah um but then i i wrote down this question in my notes sarah do you okay. think that Richmond will win the Premier League this season. Is this the last season of the show? I, I don't know. It might be. See, the thing is, like, Ted Lasso has never been about winning, right? But I don't know if there's going to be a season four of the show. I will yeah, say I this, think though. This, this might be the last season. I don't this know. could, it could all happen in one season, but I think, like, Nate has to come back to Richmond, right? Yeah. That feels like it has to happen before they win. The like okay League, so the which could last... but it could all happen in one season potentially mm, yeah but like the last episode has got to be them playing west ham right like obviously somehow they've made it to the point where they're almost gonna at least beat these guys in the league or whatever and then something has to happen and nate comes back or you know like it just feels like there could be some tense sports moment where rupert is like bro sweep the leg and then he refre refuses to do Whatever the football equivalent of sweeping the leg is. Okay. And he comes back home. I don't know. That's what I'm envisioning right now. Okay. I just, I feel like Nate has to come back to the team and be like a contributor to why they win. Like that's, mm. that's the final trajectory okay. of the show, which I, they could do it all in one season. Like somehow Nate quits or gets fired and then Ted brings him back like they did with Jamie. It seems fast to do it all in one season. Like, it almost feels like, it almost feels like in a perfect world, like, the end of this season wouldn't be them winning, but it would be, like, maybe West Ham is, like, a game away from, like, winning the championship, but Richmond plays them, and, like, Richmond beats them so that they don't win the championship. Mm. And then, and then, like, Nate gets fired, and then he gets, he comes back to the team, like, in season four. Like, that's how it, I, feels like the natural trajectory for this okay. show. But if they're, if... Maybe if they know this is the last season, it's going to be more fast paced in terms of all the yeah. uh, <laughs> transitions and mm -hmm. plot twists going on. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I don't think like them winning the the big football game is the important end to the show, right? It's the getting Nate back and the like social win is what Ted has always been about and what I think the show is going to put more emphasis on. So like at the end. Rupert might be twirling his mustache and his football or yes, football team is the best, but like he doesn't have anyone because he is a cranky old man who doesn't, you know, care about people. Yeah. It could also be like they don't win the league, but they win like one of the tournaments that they have mm. in like the middle of the season. I don't know. I don't, I, there's I don't fully understand all of the football league structures. Yeah. And they, like, at some point in this show, I swear they mentioned like that they don't really have playoffs. It's just kind of like who is top, who's at the top of the standings in the regular season, just like is the champion. So, I think so. 
It, I, I don't fully understand. But then the, uh, there was also a point where they played in like a midseason tournament. Yes. Where uh, for whatever reason they were playing against like Premier League people, even yeah, though they were B League people. Yeah. Which must be an, an actual thing that happens. But I, yeah, I don't know mm-hmm. all the details of it. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. There's a number of things they could do. I was just wondering what if you thought like if they only needed one more season to wrap up the show or if it was going to be more than that. I feel like there should be four seasons of the show, but maybe this is the last one. Yeah, I'm not sure. But yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, I don't know that the the football win is the important win for the end of the show. Regardless, it feels like they should win in the end. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, yeah, the, that's that's the traditional route, and that's what feels right. But but maybe Ted Lasso the show is trying to teach you that that's not what matters. I think they need to win in the end, but the show is more about the journey than the destination. Hmm. The destination still exists. <laughs> that's that's kind of, you know. That's I mean, what I think. at the very least, hopefully they won't get relegated back to the B League again. Oh yeah, that would. I mean, that would be sad if the entire season is just not getting kicked <laughs> to the B League, and then that's the last season of the show. That yeah. can't. That can't be what it is. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll see. That was just something I was thinking about. Mm-hmm. Anything else from the airport scene? I thought you know it was cute. The main thing about yeah. the show is like so many lines are funny mm-hmm. or cute or wholesome or whatever, and we can't talk about every line in the show. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but like I'm, I'm almost nonstop smiling mm-hmm. <laughs> at yeah. just like the banter and back and forth between conversations at the show because it's so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. But yeah, I don't have anything else from the airport scene. No, just that kid is a lot older than I remember because time oh, has yeah. passed between <laughs> filming. Yeah, yeah. But then when Ted gets home, he's going to call Dr. Sharon. Yes, the sports therapist yeah. from last season. And I, I actually kind of forgot about Dr. Sharon, but I'm I'm glad to see her again. <laughs> there was a little, like, like romantic tension between them at some point. Oh, okay, season, I was right? going to say did that. did I just make that up? No, I thought I said that, and then you were like, nah, that's stupid. <laughs> that's what I thought I, I thought we discussed I before. mean, I thought it was never going to happen because she's a professional and does not, you know hook up with her patients but there there was a little vibe that like if circumstances were different they could they could have a go of it i don't know yeah i don't know it feels like a classic setup of like because they kind of have like in season two they have their very like butting heads you mm-hmm. know to start now it's in a professional manner like you said so it's it's a little bit different than normal but usually it's like two people who butt heads but then get along later and then yeah then b- get involved romantically it's like usually the trajectory of the trope trajectory (laughs) right which Um, is an example of this show subverting normal tropes so that's why i think they don't have to win in the end i wouldn't bet my money that it's not gonna go down that route (laughs) (laughs) because it still feels like it might um Mm -hmm. but yeah they could they could just put it on put it on the back burner and never get around to it i don't know (laughs) yeah 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 I wrote down this classic Ted Ted Lasso story though. Oh yeah, he says, yes, "Did you write absolutely. this one down?" <laughs> I did too. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's opening up to Doctor Sharon, and I don't even know why he tells this story, <laughs> but this is just like the personality of Ted in a nutshell. Yeah, I think it's because he like feels bad that his son has to travel alone or something, and somehow that led oh, it, to this yeah. time he was alone as a kid or something. Yeah. So he tells a story about how one time his dad forgot to pick him up from school. So he had he ended up hanging out with the janitor and he helped the janitor clean like half the school before his dad finally came and pick him up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then his dad gave the janitor money for essentially like babysitting Ted. It's like yes. was his perspective was his dad's perspective. And then the janitor the next day gave Ted the money <laughs> for helping him clean, basically. <laughs> the yeah, same money. Child that... labor. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> but then Ted's reaction to this as a child was to then go use the money to buy a thank you gift for the janitor. <laughs> Lovely story. Clearly it ends there. Yeah. <laughs> and then he tacks on at the very end of the story. Uh, but then the janitor <laughs> died and got hit by a train the next day. So he never got to give him the gift. <laughs> Classic Ted story. Oh Usually my god, they're not that dark. Uh, yeah, that that part of the story was not classic Ted, but the, like you know, <laughs> he's almost like always thinking about somebody else and not mm-hmm. thinking about himself is kind of like the Ted Lasso. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> classic right there. Yeah, even as a child, this is just how mm-hmm. he is. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like the main thing we get from this conversation though is that 
it feels like a new like a new plot for this season is that mm -hmm. Ted is at the point now like he's been in London for two years and he kind of came over here because like he was being like he separated from his wife and, and they were like, trying he, some distance to see if that helped. Yeah, he yeah. wanted to like she said she wanted distance, so he was like okay, and then he just got a job. Like on the other side <laughs> really of the world, far away. yeah. Like he lived like, like how's it, this for distance? Took it literally and moved very yeah. far away. But now he's been here for Did two years, help. and he <laughs> seems to be like for for whatever reason, it seems kind of out of nowhere to me. Is like he doesn't really know why he's still in London, and I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why that is. I don't know where how he got to this thought. Well, because it did not improve his marriage. His marriage is over. Um, he's away from his son. He only gets to see him like during the summer. Um, he has let down this guy that he worked with who, you know, he thought he was helping out. And now he has all this guilt about how he let Nate go evil or whatever. And he just feels like he's not doing the good that he set out to do. Okay. So he, he, at one point in this conversation, he says like, I'm starting to feel like I might be doing more harm than good. Mm -hmm. You think that's directly, he's talking about Nate. Oh yeah. Okay, okay, that makes sense. I mean, it's dumb because I don't buy the Nate <laughs> transition. So uh -huh. I, that's why I didn't even put together that he was talking about Nate. Because like, I was like, Nate's not his yeah. fault. Why would he care about Nate? <laughs> but of but, course, uh, Ted thinks Nate is his fault. Yeah, okay. Because, but this, like, this is like, it's, it's crazy that Ted is thinking this way. Because every single person besides Nate on Richmond, like, he's made mm -hmm. their life better. So yeah, <laughs> it's absolutely. like, he's improved every them as people. Mm -hmm. yeah so it's like super unjust but okay but that they're 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 giving us the mindset of ted at the coming yeah. into the season he's like even even though he's helped everybody but one person he feels like a failure basically is what's yeah. going on yeah okay yeah, yeah. and especially because this one person was a big deal like he thought he had helped him and then the way he found out that it had gone poorly was in a kind of explosive manner and this guy hates him now and so it's just feels bad yeah, I guess that makes sense. It's consistent with the Ted character. Okay, I'll accept it. Okay. I have to remind myself to think like that because it doesn't seem natural, but okay, that's where we're at. And then we get the theme song for the show, Sarah. Well, like right before that, just a thing. While we're getting the voiceover of him on the phone with Dr. Sharon, he's like cleaning up his house and then he's walking to work. And he's doing that thing where he is very outwardly pleasant and greeting everybody. But you have this like voiceover of him like talking through how he like the difficulties he's having right now. And so it's really like playing off of this thing where he is outwardly always like looking like the cheerful guy, like nothing is wrong, but like behind that, he is actually hurting a lot. And so mm. that's going to be a continuing theme. Okay. Rebecca will notice it kind of. Yes. I guess he comes up with like something, but it's not really the real thing. It's, it's part of the thing, but she might also be noticing this like disheveledness that you were talking about too, which adds. To He's the... not disheveled when he goes to work. He cleans is he? up. Okay. Yeah. I just. I That's why not... I took it as like, oh, it's just like <laughs> the six week period with his son. He didn't go all yeah. out with looking nice all the time. And it's like the <laughs> off season for the football club. So that's why I didn't take it as strongly as maybe I should have. But then we get the theme song, Sarah. Yes. And this theme song just makes me happy to hear again. It does. I don't know what band this is, what song it is. I just like it. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Every episode feels good to hear this. I don't skip, <laughs> I don't skip the intro on this Oh, song. never. And here we go, Sarah. The next scene we get, a classic example of the show, is just setting the episode conflict. Mm, yeah, but yeah. But you don't know that it's not necessarily going to be a big thing, but it's an example of... Okay, here's the episode conflict, but this is the episode conflict that's going to be quickly resolved by the end of the I mean, episode. but it does, like, I, I feel like the theme of that will continue. Like, the the problem is, okay, so we're in Rebecca's office. Leslie is there. What What is Leslie? He's, like, the general manager kind of guy. Okay, okay. what? Or, like, he's, like, this the do-it-all. This is do a question all, I like, did have. Help per like, he helps Rebecca, who's the owner, but he's, uh -huh. like, the, the okay. next person, next most powerful I don't, person. I don't know what a sports manager does in terms of this but he's that guy i guess okay well so they're in her office and she is very upset because all the newspapers and sports blogs and podcasts or whatever are saying that richmond's gonna be last this season they're, they've made their predictions for the season and they're like mm, richmond's crap they're gonna go back down to the b squad again yeah. they're predicting that 20th place out of 20 <laughs> teams <laughs> yes 
that's pretty that's pretty low for 20 20 <laughs> to get last place yeah yeah and on top of that west ham rupert's team rebecca's ex-husband team mm-hmm. is predicted to finish in the top four which yes. i don't know if that means something <laughs> like, i mean i it I, I swear they said something in the show at one point that like you know maybe like the top three teams in the league all are the champion all are the champions like oh. I, don't, I don't know i don't know how it works unfortunately i know in like l- when you're not in the top league like the top what two or three are the ones that get promoted yeah when you have nowhere to get promoted to i don't i don't know what you get but in terms of like but... winning the league Mm-hmm. It even might be something weird where, like, you don't even have to be the best team. It's just, like, if you're in the top whatever, you are considered, like, the winners of the league. I, I don't know. So I don't know if top four means something. To me, it's like, oh, Specific. top four, okay. that's not, like, the best team in the league. It's just, like, better than, obviously, yeah. better than Richmond is being predicted to be. But right. I don't know if top four means something more significant in the context of the Premier League. I'm not sure. Mm, okay. And then this is a funny interaction where Rebecca's, like, really upset about the standings predictions for the season Mm -hmm. the season hasn't even started yet and then she's talking to ted about beating or basically like doing better than west ham this season but whenever she refers to west ham the team she's She's using actually says rupert or he and referring yeah she's using he him pronouns to describe (laughs) a team so ted is immediately picking up on the fact that she like he even tries to correct her saying like oh you mean them he's like him you mean, <laughs> you mean they and she's like yeah that's what i said like almost as it's like she doesn't even realize she's doing it that's how yeah, exactly. like obsessed she is <laughs> mm-hmm. and that's how much rupert is in her head that she doesn't even realize that she's referring to a team with he him pronouns <laughs> yeah and ted is immediately picking up on this <laughs> mm-hmm. and like noting it in his mind basically yeah yeah but yeah we basically just get rebecca is obsessed with beating rupert this Mm -hmm. season more so like in the past season she's she wants the team to win but she's not as like passionate but this season she's like like, really wants it to happen yeah last season they like they weren't in the same league or he didn't own that team yet i think that might have happened like near the end of the second season he didn't own a team at all because he lost he lost this one to her in the divorce divorce. Yeah. yeah but then he i don't know he might have to do some shady shit to even be allowed to buy a team i'm not sure I'm not sure what yeah, happened. Yeah, it was weird. He had to like shady get man. his girlfriend, give his girlfriend money to buy the team or something. It was something weird because <laughs> yeah. I thought he was like barred from owning any team in the league for some reason. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Yeah, it was. There was definitely something where he did some shady shit to. to Even get if you team. just watched this episode, you would pick up on the vibes of Rupert very fast. Oh yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> they do radiating not, They're not that, subtle like, about like, bad trying guy to make vibes. Him, yeah. <laughs> so yeah rebecca even gets a little like she feels like ted's not hyped up enough for the season and she's trying to get him to like fight harder or do more than what he's already doing which is like such a weird thing to ask ted to do like Mm -hmm. (laughs) if you've watched the first two seasons it's like it's basically like asking ted not to be ted anymore yeah which is like against everything that has worked for the team so far Mm, absolutely and yeah they talk about signing new players also which ted he doesn't have a huge reaction to, but he doesn't think they need to. Yeah, he thinks the team already like works well together. Yeah, Ted's never really worried about making Winning. the team. <laughs> he doesn't want like quick fixes mm-hmm. necessarily for a team. He wants to like make a long term, stable kind of environment for the players, basically, right. and make the make the players better people before worrying about like making the team a better football team. You know, that's mm-hmm. that's his focus. And it's right. it's gotten them this far. Yeah. They had to take one step back to take two steps forward is where we're getting here with the Ted Lasso yeah. strategy. <laughs> but uh that she's she's too impatient for that. She needs to beat him in this beat moment, Rupert now. In this yeah. moment, yeah. So it feels like they're setting up conflict between Rebecca and Ted going forward. Right. And if this was like a more dramatic TV show, <laughs> they would That would like, be the whole season. They would like they would never talk about how they're actually feeling with each other and then they would just keep getting into fights over dumb shit but that's not gonna happen here we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna resolve this by the end of this episode mm-hmm. Let's go. absolutely <laughs> and then we go to all the players in the locker room sarah yes and we first see that signature ted lasso sign above his door which just says believe 
which is like a thing from the first season. Yeah. I noticed it wasn't crooked anymore. Do, do you remember the moment they straightened it out or is that just... Well, because Nate tore it down and ripped it and they had to make oh, a new so one. so they put it back up straight. They made it look very much like the first one. Somehow. <laughs> I say about the players in this episode. I would say there's like no major plot development with the players. Yeah. Uh, from this first episode, I guess the players for the first two seasons are more side plots than anything. Uh, we get deep into the players, I think, in the second season. Um, well, and then there's always like when Roy was a player and he was playing with Jamie, like their conflict was a big thing. I think they'll get more into the players in the rest of this season. I just think there was bigger things they wanted to plot out. Okay. Before they they really dive into whatever subplots they got for those guys. Yeah, the but the player I think is probably most important to talk about is Jamie. Do you think Jamie Tart? Yeah. Because if the show really wants to like rehash the past, <laughs> they could you know they could mm -hmm. have a Keely and Jamie thing again if they wanted oh, to. Yeah. But Jamie is the character that like the first time I watched it, he's just kind of like the douchey player who like star player who doesn't care about yeah. anybody he's the one who makes all the goals and thinks he's the only reason the team does any good and lets everybody else know that all the time yeah and when i watched the show the first time like i just like wasn't a fan of his character mm -hmm. but then when i went back and rewatched sarah yeah knowing like i get maybe it helps to know like where his character ends up uh -huh. in terms of like taking his lines less seriously or whatever yeah. I think he has some of the funniest lines oh, <laughs> in like yeah, the yeah. first season of the show <laughs> after I like was paying more attention and not just being like, oh, this character's dumb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, what he says, even though it's like terrible, it's like funny mm -hmm. how he delivers it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I Jamie is like what other than Ted, probably Jamie might actually be like my favorite character of the show. And he's not <laughs> I wouldn't even say he's a main character. He's like yeah. more of a side character. <laughs> But he has great lines. Yeah, he definitely does. <laughs> yeah. A good performance. Like, his line in this locker room is like, we don't have to worry because we're together. And <laughs> together, as long we as, have me. As long as we're together, <laughs> we've got me. That's what he said. <laughs> That's a great line. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> and he has, over the course of the show, become a, a better person. So I, I don't think this particular line means he's turning back to the the selfish bit but there's always a little bit of that stirring inside of him but like the rest of the players are more chill with him now and they they get like that he's joking around so it's okay. yeah i think the best example of like people being adults about a tough situation on the show is mm -hmm. the relationship between jamie and roy on the show yes and specifically there's like a point in time when roy is like dating keely for the majority of the second season or if not all of it mm -hmm. i forget and Jamie used to date Keely, but he was like a jerk. So they like broke up and it was like no big deal. But then Jamie kind of, after they broke up, like became a better person and then also realized that he actually like loved Keely, like mm -hmm. legitimately. And he yes. like told her about it, knowing that yeah. she was dating Roy. Mm -hmm. And then there was this whole thing where like Keely didn't tell Roy about it right away. But then mm -hmm. Roy also had a moment with like his niece's teacher. Yes. Where yes. they had a vibe. The teacher <laughs> asked if he was seen anyone married or something. Maybe oh, was that's a specific right. question. And he just said no, but didn't like clarify, clarify. Yeah. that he was dating somebody, which he would not tell Keely right away, but then feel guilty about it. And then they would have like a moment where they tell each other that like they've been keeping something from each other. But then Roy's like immediate reaction is that he's like very upset. That Jamie <laughs> told Keely. <laughs> yes. And like, it looks like he's gonna like go into the locker room and like beat Jamie up. But then Jamie like legitimately just like apologizes and like just says like, like opens up and is like, no, like I legit feel this way in a way that like Roy realizes that like he's not just like doing it as like an asshole. Mess with like him he actually or, yeah, loves yeah. Keely. He's... Yeah. And then he just like forgives him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like, yep. That was such a good scene when I watched this. Because so, so many good. shows are just like, oh, here's a reason to have two people have a fist fight. <laughs> like, you yep, know, like, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that didn't happen because people behave like adults on this show usually. <laughs> yeah, even Roy, who is like a ridiculous hothead, yeah. you know, yeah. like he He's, swears at everything he and like flips every over other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But still, did not turn yeah. into a fist fight because responsible And then, adults. love it. Just to keep reminiscing about this, this, uh, 
progression of things. This was mm-hmm. the one moment in the Nate storyline that I was actually like, okay, if I was Nate here, this was something <laughs> that would bother me. Because there's yeah. a point where, and I, I didn't remember this all until today, but there was a point where Nate... Nate kisses Keely. Nate kisses Keely because he's in love with her or like has some kind of feelings for her. Mm-hmm. And Keely kind of like rejects him and it's like no big de- deal to Keely to go tell Roy that that happened. Mm-hmm. And, and Roy doesn't care. He's like, Roy oh, doesn't that's care. Fine. And then Nate kissed her. Like he's not threatened by him basically is the mm-hmm. idea. But then Nate finds out about the Jamie thing and how mad Roy got. And then that is like another thing that like triggers Nate to be yeah. upset. I think he even like tells him to punch him or something. And he's like, no, it's fine. You're good. We're fine. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that was like the one thing that happened that I was like, okay, I can see why Nate is offended by that. But from like a reasonable perspective, it's like more threatening for Jamie to tell her that he loves her because they have a history and it wasn't like just a spur of the moment thing, you know, like, so if Nate took a moment to be reasonable about it, maybe he'd be less insulted by it. But yeah, I don't think it's like a reason to be like for Nate's story arc to have gone the way it did. But it was the one moment when I rewatched it. I was like, oh, yeah, this like yeah. is a reasonable thing to get upset about, at least temporarily, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and Nate's arc is a lot of like death by a thousand paper cuts. You know, it's not one big thing that turns him. It's all these many yeah. times he feels less than for various reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then we cut to a scene with uh, Roy and Coach Beard. They're in the coach's room. Yes, and they're coming up with a strategy for the season because, again, everybody has heard that they have been predicted to be last in the league. Yeah, and I guess Roy and Coach Beard are, like, both taking on the responsibility that Nate had of, like, coming up Mm -hmm. with a strategy for the games. Yes. And Nate was more, he's more of the, like, he knows tricks and certain mm-hmm. matchups and he, he like He'll he's come better up with clever things yeah, yeah he's he's yeah better at coming up with clever stuff whereas like roy knows more just like how to do the basics really really well yeah and play mm-hmm. solid traditional football yes and that's basically his recommendation to ted because that's what he's familiar with <laughs> but he yeah. acknowledges that like he doesn't know the tricks that nate does yeah and there the moment like he mentions nate you see like Ted's face does a little like yeah. little moment of oh no Nate yeah and then I love <laughs> literally like the first couple lines that Roy has they give him like a whole bunch of f bombs just to like reestablish <laughs> his character yeah. in season three <laughs> it's like yes Roy has not changed he's the same <laughs> he's the same outwardly angry guy who's not actually like an angry person <laughs> that, yeah yeah like classic he's, he's a reasonable fuzzy person heart of inside. gold yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then. We cut to West Ham or whatever the place is called where West Ham plays. Oh, yeah. Well, I was just going to say Nate is showing up at West Ham Stadium. In his teeny little car. He's in his teeny little like European car. And they have, (laughs) this was great. They have like some amazing music as he like rolls in and is going to work. It's like some like hip hop music that like Mm -hmm. does not actually vibe with Nate's personality at all. (laughs) Yeah. It, it vibes with what Nate wants to be or thinks he is sometimes, but I not guess, like yeah, maybe who he is. You think it's like if he's because Nate kind of has this like it's not like split personality, but like there's like the Nate that we know from the first, two and then seasons there's the douchebag he is able to summon sometimes. Yeah, and then he basically like he almost kind of learns this from like Keely and Rebecca, like mm. maybe not directly, but they kind of give him advice on how to like be more confident and like demand what he wants more and he like this mm-hmm. is what he is like comes up with <laughs> this like he is so he's like overshot. he's able to like turn it on in certain mm-hmm. moments even though he's like normal nate a lot so you think like yeah. when he's rolling up to the stadium like this music is supposed to indicate us that he's in like confident nate mode uh is that is maybe that, do you think that's what the music is indicating i could buy that because i think in this yeah. scene like he gets to his desk and he's like looking at social media again, like he always does. And he's like seeing mm-hmm. all these positive things. He's, and he's feeling not good about just himself. looking at social media. He is specifically looking at his hashtag on Twitter. Like, oh, is that what he's doing? Okay. Yeah, because I paused it because I went to write some notes, and then it was on the screen. I'm like, oh, he's just looking at himself. Okay. Yeah. So he's getting he's feeling good, and then like some random guy like comes in 
to say hi to him and he just is like go away like in a way that like yeah. <laughs> the normal Nate would not say so mm-hmm. I think maybe that maybe that's something to pay attention to like whenever we're getting this music it's like Nate it's like an Asshole indicator Nate, of like yeah. what mood Nate is in yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> I had this thought when I was watching that I think gets answered later but like do you think Nate likes this like wonder kid meme now um because like the some of the social media posts he was looking at were like Still using the Wonder Kid meme, but now in like a positive way. Right. Yeah, I think he likes the attention, but still is embarrassed that it is, it came from his mistake. Yeah. And is still unable to accept that he made a mistake, you know, because he's like, oh, I'm pretty sure I said Wonder Kid or yeah, whatever. Yeah, he still says yeah. that sometimes, yeah. I still feel like he hates it. And the show is like really going to harp on it in this first episode. Like... Every time he talks to Rupert, mm-hmm. Rupert is going to call him the Wonder Kid. It is true that the guy he told to get out, like, came in and was like, here's the Wonder Kid himself. And, like, he told him to fuck off, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. So yeah. that probably was part of the thing that triggered it. Yeah. Yeah. So even though he's, like, more confident and he got hired as a head coach for a good team and all this stuff, I feel like he's still very self-conscious about Oh yeah, yeah. all the stuff that he went through on Richmond. So he's not, it's not like he's really matured at all, you know? Yeah. He's moved up in the world, but he hasn't actually matured as a person. Yeah. He's just able to turn on this fake personality sometimes. Which again, is like very the opposite of the Ted Mm, life philosophy. (laughs) Absolutely. First, he is out like with the players practicing. (laughs) This is, this was funny. (laughs) Oh, this is, this is uh, a classic douchebag (laughs) Nate. Yeah. So he calls out one of the players, doesn't use his name, acts like he doesn't know it. And he's just like, here, come come with me and, and stand on this line. Very important. Don't leave this line. And then he's like, hey, everybody, listen. This is the dumb, dumb line. And only <laughs> dumb, dumb stand here. So you stay here until I tell you otherwise. And then he puts somebody else in to practice. Yeah. We didn't and even... it's like so silly, but also like so demeaning and just like the antithesis of the way Ted would ever approach anything. <laughs> It, it's almost so dumb though that it's like not demeaning like if somebody did this to you just be like man this guy's crazy because <laughs> we but just the, the way he called it out in front of everybody yeah, like yeah. he was trying to belittle him but he didn't even like dumb dumbs like not even like insulting enough to <laughs> i don't know it, it came across as funny more than anything to me not, but i get like what like it's supposed to be like nate is a hard ass kind of coach uh, well, like it's like said, he's the opposite of playing time. at being a hard ass. Yeah, but he's really just being mean for no reason. Yeah, this player though, like we didn't see anything he did before Nate called him over, mm-hmm. and then yeah, Nate offered. He just put him on a line, called him a dum dum, and offered no advice whatsoever to becoming a yep. player, like to do whatever he did wrong better. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was just like you're a dum dum. Figure out, figure it out. Why you're not? <laughs> and yep. then he tells somebody else to get it. Go out there. He's like, go out there and hope you don't join him on the dumb dumb line. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't even think the other player knew what the first guy did wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. There was no learning happening at all nope. in this process. <laughs> I'm gonna say it. Nate's a bad coach. Just a bad coach. <laughs> he's, but he's so good tactically that maybe it doesn't matter. I mean, it does matter because this is the show Ted Lasso for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then he's gonna get summoned to talk to Rupert. Yes. Uh, let's just go through this Rupert talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as he starts talking to Rupert, like, he's immediately back in, like, classic Nate mode. Like, he's not confident at all. Yeah. Well, and because he can't be a hard-ass to his boss, right? Like, he he has to be, like, accommodating to this guy. Like, it wouldn't go well if he told him to fuck off. I guess so. I mean, I guess he just got to the point with Ted where he got fed up with whatever the situation was. But he's not... Mm-hmm. He doesn't have any personal reason to... Hate Rupert right yeah. now, so he's just defaulting to his normal self. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Rupert's like calling him the Wonderkind, and I couldn't really tell if we were supposed to notice him like not really enjoying it. But I, I felt like the idea of this scene for me was like almost the way that Rupert talks to Nate is like making him feel like his old, not confident self. Yeah, yeah, almost like it's almost like he's like trying to be like fatherly to him, but mm. in like like a Almost like a demeaning kind of way. Like you're talking yeah, down absolutely. to your son kind of mm-hmm. moment. Yeah. And like Rupert's the kind of guy who is like all the things that Nate always thought he wasn't. Right. Like Rupert's rich and fancy and powerful or whatever. Right. And um, mm-hmm. 
like last season, Nate had a hard time getting a table in an empty restaurant. Like, so it's a complete dynamic of like, this is what he can't be or is trying to be and makes him feel small, I think, again. Yeah. But I almost also thought of it as like, I feel like Ted was like almost like a fatherly f- figure to Nate. And yeah, the idea yeah, is absolutely. like, I don't know why Ru- like Rupert would be this like clever, but it almost seems like he's intentionally like filling this void in mm-hmm. Nate's life of being like the quote unquote, like good father, because like Nate has a whole history with his dad is like not very supportive yeah, of him. Yeah. So, like, Rupert's being the supportive father, but at the same time, like, calling him by a name that kind of triggers him. <laughs> so, it's, like, it's yeah. it's like a really weird dynamic. And there is, like, an undercurrent of, like, the moment that Nate doesn't deliver, this is going to change, you know? Yeah. That's, that's what I'm wondering. Like, is this going to happen at the end of the season or is it going to happen in the middle of the season kind of thing? Mm-hmm. And I, well, the thing I wonder is it feels like... Nate even at this point might only like to Rupert might only just be a pawn in this like mind game that's going on between Rupert and Rebecca like the two Mm -hmm. owners and like I wouldn't be surprised if it turns out like somebody else on the team is like who Rupert considers to be like the actual coach like some other assistant coach and like Nate Mm -hmm. is like literally just there because he was he knows it's going to like trigger Rebecca or like trigger Ted mm. or like just, yeah. it's just Nate's just on the team to annoy Richmond. Basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would buy that. Rupert claims he recognizes Nate's genius as a coach mm-hmm. and thinks he's valuable in a way that like the way that Rupert's been built up on the show is like, you almost trust nothing he says. So yeah, I'm not sure how genuine that is or if he ever mm-hmm. is genuine to anybody, but. Oh yeah. Incapable of it. <laughs> But then what happens also, which is, like, another, like, talking down to him kind of moment is, like, it turns out, like, they thought that a car was, like, parked in the, like, VIP spots by mistake. And they're having it, like, towed away. And then, like, Nate looks out the window and it's like, oh, wait, wait, that's actually, uh, that's a, that's That's actually my car. car. That's my car. (laughs) And then Rupert is kind of, like, taken aback by it. And Mm. I literally thought that, like, he was just going to be like oh well we're gonna have to get that fixed up for you and it was like gonna basically offer to like buy him a car in that moment but that's actually Mm. not what happens and he almost like talks to him in like a disappointed kind of way like oh you were better than this notify the tow driver that the uh uh what do you call it oh the automobile (laughs) uh the automobile's owner has been found and you can put it the car back (laughs) like so yeah so he almost like takes a jab at his car Mm -hmm. in like a weird like disappointed father kind of way i don't know it was a super weird it was very weird and like right before nate went oh that's my car like rupert had this super villain line basically yeah yeah where his assistant was like oh yeah we think one of the cleaners parked in that lot by accident and he's like and accidents have consequences and it's like whoa way over the top evil dude don't it down this is your day job yeah it's a little like silly like rupert's like an almost over the top villain at this point but i you know i'm fine with it he's the bad guy he's the bad guy that'll always be the good guy i have no i don't expect rupert Oh yeah, make up with rebecca at any point in the show that's not the point of his role in the show (laughs) no mustache twirlingly evil character <laughs> yeah. that's it definitely setting up that nate is going to do something wrong or maybe not do something wrong and then just be fired or like <laughs> something's gonna be taken out on him whether he deserves yeah. it or not yeah but yeah that's the main part of the rupert and nate stuff from this episode yep. until we get to the press co- press conferences okay uh do you want to talk about rebecca and keely yes Rebecca goes to visit Keely at her new fancy office because she started up a PR firm. And um, I think Keely like hung up on Joe Rogan or something. <laughs> that I appreciated. I love that. I, <laughs> I, it wasn't clear like if she was talking to Joe Rogan or the conversation triggered it. Was about him, but, but it, she hung up and she yeah, like, it may seem like she was Joe Rogan. talking to Joe Rogan on the phone and she was like pretending to be nice. And then she hung up the phone. And she's like, fuck you, Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, appreciated that. I appreciated that line. <laughs> and yeah, Rebecca's just visiting her, and we're kind of getting reminded of Keely's status mm-hmm. now. 
And yeah, they did this whole, the weird thing with Roy that like the specifics of it was like, it was at the very end of the season and it was like, Keely got a new job running her own PR firm. Mm -hmm. And then Roy. He like planned a long vacation for them to get away with. And she's just like, I'm too busy for that right now, but you go and have a good time. It's fine. Yeah. But in a way that like should not have been a big deal. Yeah, but there that's were why like, I just felt like it was out of nowhere. Like it was just I don't know. Th there was like long glances at the. I don't know. Yeah, it just, it no. Felt... They, they made yeah. it clear that the show was trying to make it a thing. It was just out of left field, in my opinion, in terms of. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So there's reestablishing that Keely is super busy. She even, she even like once Rebecca and Keely get in the room, Keely just starts crying. <laughs> yes because and then i i could not understand what she said but i was watching with my wife and my wife understood what she said <laughs> she says that she's so busy that she has to schedule into her day time to cry alone <laughs> yes but she double booked that time with rebecca's visit with rebecca so. visit, yeah so she cries on rebecca basically <laughs> and rebecca's happy to be there for it they are very good friends yeah are we supposed to like think that she's crying about Roy at this point or what do you think um in the moment I felt like she was just stressed overwhelmed and you know sometimes you need a good cry it didn't feel like anything particular to me at the time okay yeah I I was still curious I was still, still thinking about Keely and Roy but like it was a little suspect that we haven't got a scene with them together <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> up until this point that's like how I was kind of feeling but but this is, isn't actually specifically about Roy or anything. So they're having lunch. Keely feels better after crying. And they're, you know, talking about what Rebecca's upset about, where she's just, like, upset that Rupert's probably real happy right now that their team's getting talked shit about and his team's going to do great. I think it's at this point where Keely gives her some advice on, like, letting Ted be Ted. Because, you know, Ted has a way of taking care of things and she shouldn't, like, try to force him to, like, be a different, like, you, you want him as your coach for a reason, you know? Yeah. And trying to force him outside of that is, is not going to do anybody any good. Yeah. Keely is a good friend. Yeah, absolutely. You know, she's a smart person. Yeah. She basically says the way I felt earlier where I was like, you're basically asking Ted not to be Ted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Keely yep. immediately is like, oh, well, he's got to let Ted be Ted. And she says exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> so good. So it's like, it's like this show's made for me, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> It's very good, yes. There's going to be another moment where I felt that way, too, coming up. <laughs> yeah, okay. Just in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> the big note for me in this conversation was at the end where Rebecca asked Keely to dinner, but she Keely said she can't go because her and Roy are going to have the talk with Roy's niece, Phoebe, which on its face sounds like a funny comment, like, oh, they're going to tell her about sex. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of how I took it at the moment. Yeah, same. So I was like, oh, that'll be an interesting scene <laughs> if they do mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, imagining Roy trying to give a yeah, yeah, the yeah. talk That's is what we want to hilarious. See. <laughs> <laughs> we want to see Roy explain <laughs> that to his yep. niece. That'd be good. Because Phoebe, also an amazing character, <laughs> the niece yes. on the show. Yes, absolutely. And their dynamic, like his dynamic with, with his niece is just great. Yeah. Phoebe might be the most adult person on the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's saying a lot. It's a cast yeah, full and it's of adults. Yeah, it's a cast full of adults. And this, what is she, like, 11 years old? I don't know how she's old she's supposed to be. I, yeah. I have no clue. Something like Teeny. That. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're going to have the talk with Phoebe later. But then we, I think we go back to the players. And they're they're practicing. Yeah. We get some of the players talking about how, I think, even the Paddington Bear Twitter yeah, this account is, great. is saying how they're <laughs> terrible and they're not going to win anything. and. Yeah, Rebecca's not the only one looking at the predictions to the standings. The yeah. players are aware of it, too, and they're, like, stressing out about it. And, this, yeah, this was great. He, I forget. He was like, even Paddington Bear picked them to finish last. Because <laughs> apparently the Paddington Bear, like, Twitter account tweeted out <laughs> a list of the, the standings. Yeah, yeah. And then, predictions for the season. I mean, how, how familiar are you with Paddington Bear, sir? Um, I watched the current TV show that's on like Nick Jr. Oh, so I'm very all I familiar. know is that they made a movie recently, and the CG bear was was a little bit scary. To I have me. not seen the movies, but I'd seen I haven't the, seen the it. Animated but I TV saw show. a preview, and yeah. it scared me. Well, for those who are familiar with Paddington Bear, <laughs> Jamie in the episode says, "Yeah, on a scale of one marmalade sandwich to five marmalade sandwiches, <laughs> Richmond got zero marmalade sandwiches." <laughs> <laughs> that was an incredible line incredible reference see that's 
I get that reference. <laughs> good, good, good. I don't know how many adults will get that reference, but <laughs> Other I get that reference children. and it's super funny. <laughs> But then there's also this moment here where, like, the one guy, Danny, is sad that, you know, he's like, even the cute bear doesn't believe in us. And another guy's like, I hate to bring it to you, but the bear is probably not, <laughs> like, other people are operating that Twitter account. He doesn't say that the bear's not real. He says that other people operate his Twitter account for him. Yeah, and then Danny's and like, is... oh, really? That's so sad. <laughs> Like, he's so sad by this information. <laughs> it's such a precious, cute moment. <laughs> yeah. It. Yeah. That's just a classic, like. Ted Lasso line that's so good mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah Ted and Coach Beard notice the team is stressing out so they yeah. decide to take the team on a field trip <laughs> yes and I oh, love yeah. the way Ted like gets the guys to the bus he's just like all right everybody run to the bus last person there has to eat a little bug and he goes <laughs> everybody run except for Roy and then everybody does run except for Roy who just walks and I can't decide if it's because Roy doesn't care what Ted says, or yeah. Roy's following the rule and doesn't care about having to eat a little bug. If that's what actually happens, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I thought way, it was. I couldn't tell if it was like, oh, Roy is too cool to have to participate in Ned's Ted's nonsense, and that's just like accepted. Or is it like, like Roy has a leg injury, so like maybe he like physically can't run. <laughs> I think is. The other oh, that's right. It. He did have the knee situation yeah. before. But yeah. then they show everybody know. running away, and then Roy's just like walking by himself, and then they just give like they put on this like badass music while Roy's just like <laughs> walking, <laughs> and yep. everybody else is running. <laughs> oh, this show good, so good. I think it's just because his leg is like he actually just like can't. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. That's a good. Yeah. Where do you think uh, Ted is going to take the team, Sarah? Where did you Where did you think they were going? <laughs> Um, I had no, I had idea. no clue, but like, would have um, never where they this. end up <laughs> is like not on the list of things I would have potentially guessed. Yeah, they end up um going down into the sewer, because, <laughs> the London <you> know, sewer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and that it was very large down there. I did not anticipate that, but um, yeah, apparently, uh, Ted and his son had gone on a tour of the sewer recently, and so that's how Ted knew this was a place they could all go hang out. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ted knew like the the specific tour guide that he had, and he like called yes, him up yes. because his his son on the plane ride to London watched the movie It on somebody else's like tablet. <laughs> yeah, like his and neighbor then, was watching it, and he accidentally saw it and got spooked and wanted yeah. to go face his fears, so they went on a tour. And then it was yeah, it was Ted's sewer. son's idea to face his fears by going to the London sewer. <laughs> Even the kids on this show, very adult, yeah, so adult, very yeah. responsible. <laughs> But as they're going down in the sewer, the team is like, they're going down in like a manhole, like one person at a time. Some mm-hmm. like construction workers see them and they like take a picture. Not just that. They're like, is that Roy Kent? And the one guy just yells, Roy <laughs> Kent, is that you? And Roy just yells, get fucked. And he's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's like a great interaction. <laughs> but yeah, so um, Twitter is going to be full of pictures. Of yeah, them you know where this is, going. this is Yeah, This is very memeable. The last place team going in literally going into a sewer (laughs) yeah (laughs) okay um do you want to try to explain the metaphor that ted is trying to build a blessing around by going to the sewer i knew you were gonna ask me this and as i was writing notes i'm like i don't have a good way to describe (laughs) this but well first he asked them what they are surrounded by and our dear jamie (laughs) tart gives the answer i expected the least where he says poopy but in a weird way. I don't even. I can't replicate it. It was so silly. He says poupe. Poupe? Is that what it was? Yeah. It's 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 a bunch of. Poupe. It's very silly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how everybody refers to it for the rest of the scene. But basically, the metaphor is that in the sewer they are surrounded by shit. But when they're not in the sewer, they're just surrounded by everybody else's bullshit. You know, talking about how they're going to be last or whatever. So they have to build their own sewer system where they're all interconnected with each other and then just let the shit flow away. Yep. But <laughs> when they're feeling bad, they should just borrow each other's confidence because they're connected. So it's stay connected and let everything else flow away. Well, whatever that each individual is good at, you should rely on them for that. So if you need yeah. if you need more confidence, you should take some of Jamie's confidence and I forget what the other people he said. If, oh, if you if you need to feel happy, 
go talk to Danny was like the idea. Mm-hmm. So he's like names a few players basically like yes. l- like get to know each other basically and rely on each other and just let everything go away, you know, just don't let, worry about let anything. Let the poop else. flow right through you. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope not through you, just a wave. Well, he described you. it that way. <laughs> I guess it's true. <laughs> Yeah, the team really takes to this metaphor, and it looks like they are feeling better. Yeah, the poupe metaphor is really good. <laughs> <laughs> so while this is happening, there is a press conference happening at West Ham, and Rebecca is watching it in her office. So we get a lot of back and forth between these three locations. Nate's doing a press conference. I don't know if this yeah. is the first one. It might be the first one. I'm not sure. I think it's the first one he's doing. Yeah, and Rupert again introduces him as the wonder kid like they're real the show is really hopping on the fact that like Mm -hmm. rupert is using the phrase that nate hates yes and nate comes in with like normal nate vibes where he's awkward and doesn't really like feel sure of himself no confidence answering the first question yeah the first question is like how are you getting on with the guys on the team and he's basically like i don't it's from some song from the sound of music where it's like yeah, getting to know them, getting to know all about oh, them. Oh, really? It's I see. The, very, I didn't get yeah. that. I didn't get that reference. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, so then it looks like he's like having a panic attack because he like ducks down on the side, like behind the desk. And you have these flashes of times where like he's been embarrassed or felt small or whatever. And then he does this weird spitting thing he does. Sometimes to morph into asshole Nate, he has to spit like aggressively. And I don't like it. In the past, he like looks in the mirror and he almost like spits on himself. It's on himself, yeah. yeah. But apparently, he doesn't need to do that anymore. He just needs to find a place aggressively to spit, spit alone <laughs> and then get himself hyped up. Because it was like Rebecca. Rebecca's thing that we found out is like when she goes into a meeting with people that she thinks are intimidating, she like mm-hmm. pretends makes to herself be, feel big. Yeah, yeah, she pretends she's like a giant bear and she like goes at her tippy toes and reaches. Her arms like way up, and she showed mm-hmm. Nate the strategy, but it like didn't work for him. Oh, it works for me. I stole it. Like, it works for how you. How I get myself oh. pumped up now? If I'm nervous about a thing, I do the Rebecca Bear thing. You got to try the spit strategy, though. No, I don't like the spit strategy. It's <laughs> aggressive and weird. I don't like it. Yeah, but you don't know until you try it, Sarah. <laughs> do you want asshole, Sarah? Because that's that's how you get asshole, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. That's what happened to Nate. <laughs> I mean, the, th- uh, the the big thing didn't work for Nate, so, you know, it's everybody's different. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Still don't like this bidding thing, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't like it either. It's kind of disturbing. When he yeah. first does it, it's like, ugh. Like, on top of the fact that I just, like, didn't like the heel turn from Nate or, like, the reason mm-hmm. behind the heel turn at the time. And then it was also, like, it was, like, painful to watch, you know? Nate was a likable yeah, yeah. guy for so he long. Was, and then the show just, like, Seemingly unjustifiably made him shitty, but, you know, I get it for the story. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he does the spit thing, and then he comes out behind the desk, and now he's, like, he's he's confident in Nate now. And he's ready, yeah. to, he's ready to shit on people. And the next guy, like, <laughs> asked him this really condescending question, like... It was, know, a, how, it was an be, asshole question. <laughs> you must be so overwhelmed, because, like, two years ago, you were just washing the underwear of another team, and now you're, like, the big fancy coach of this team. How oh, terrible for you. And he's just like, no, I earned this job, and you're an idiot. Yeah. It's actually a good answer. Like... I, it's it's an answer I like as like kind of like sometimes sometimes media people ask like the dumbest shit, mm-hmm. in, especially in like sports press conferences. <laughs> yeah, even Leslie, who's watching like over Rebecca's shoulder in the scene, is like, ooh, <laughs> like he's impressed by that <laughs> answer. Like he's like yeah. they're not a fan of Nate, or they're not a fan of at least they're not a fan of uh, West Ham. So like you would think like they're not gonna like anything he says, but they he actually likes yeah. what, what he says when he answers that question. <laughs> I think they cut back and forth between like the sewer. Yeah, and the yeah, players yeah. are like asking questions about the sewer <laughs> and like why they're mm-hmm. there, and it's it's like there's like a symmetry between the questions that's like Nate's answering and the yeah, questions yeah. they're answering. But for this scene, eventually in the press conference, like somebody asks him a question about Richmond. Yeah, why why is everyone predicting them to be in twentieth? And he's like, because probably because there's no twenty first. You like it's yeah. his snarky like, which is a pretty good burn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i like that one <laughs> he says that earlier in the episode when he's talking to 
Rupert and Rupert really laughs at it. So he says it again in the press conference because Rupert's not only there. that, like he looks to Rupert for approval and yeah. Rupert like nods at him. And Rupert's then he's like, goes say in. that shit, do it. <laughs> he's like, sweep the leg, do it, Nate. And Rupert's like, I paid that, that media person <laughs> to ask the question so that you can in this say exact this. <laughs> way. Yes. <laughs> Probably honestly what happens. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yes. And then everybody in the room's phone starts buzzing because they're all getting the picture that the construction worker took of the Richmond team literally going into a sewer. Yes. And so, of course, they asked Nate to comment on it. And he's like, well, they probably have to train in a sewer because their coach is so shitty. <laughs> yeah. The easy ass burn, not as yes. not as clever at all. <laughs> but they cut to Rebecca watching it, and she is so mad. Yeah, Rebecca's really mad. She doesn't see the humor in this situation at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. More so, like it seems like you know, like she's upset with that Ted went to a sewer. Yeah, that he opened them up to this criticism, basically. Rebecca almost like in the first season, like almost never gets mad at Ted, right? Like this is kind of like a yeah. new thing. Mm-hmm. Even when she was, like, trying to use Ted to, like, destroy the whole football club, she was she was still nice and pleasant to him, you know? Like, yeah. there was never any <laughs> weird animosity. Yeah. And then eventually the rest of the Richmond team sees what Nate said. And yes. they're all kind of freaking out about it. But then Jamie comes <laughs> in with his new mature self and says, mm-hmm. don't worry about it, guys. It's just poop hay. Let it flow. <laughs> <laughs> And then they're all like, yeah. They're, they're like, all yeah. Fine. And then Danny's like, oh, that, yeah, like they, like we learned in the sewer. <laughs> you know, from earlier, guys. From earlier, yeah. The poop oh. <laughs> It's just poop Let it flow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's their new life philosophy. Uh, so the team's cool. The team's fine with it. But Rebecca, but, but Rebecca is not. Is not. <laughs> yeah, she sends a text to Ted that's like, come to my office. I want to talk. Or at least that's the that's the, the tone, tone I read it with. <laughs> I don't think Ted read it that way. <laughs> it, I, I think he just read mm. it as like, come to my office. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Until he gets there and he sees what's what. So, yeah, Rebecca's going to kind of uh, be mad at him face to face. But Ted, yep. like Ted always does, doesn't take it personally and is not yep. reciprocating the negative energy immediately like a lot of people would do in most TV shows. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Absolutely. She wants him to like address what Nate said and she just talks about how she's upset that everybody's laughing at them, that Rupert's laughing at them and he wants him she wants him to fight back. And he's like, "Okay." She was like, "Are you going to do anything about what Nate said?" And he was like, "No. I'm not going to do anything." <laughs> like he wasn't going to do anything at all. He's just going to Yeah. If they asked him a question about it, he was going to just say something nice about Nate and that was it. But mm-hmm. he can tell that his friend Rebecca is hurting in a way that's more than just like football he understands like this is about rupert it's not about yeah yeah Mm -hmm. so it's like he sees a friend in pain more than he sees like a boss yelling at him yeah yeah but it's a tough because like we don't know what he basically ted's gonna have a press conference but we don't know what he's gonna do as the audience because it it seems as though rebecca is basically asking ted to get in like a childish (laughs) Mm. back and forth with nate she wants him to clap back yeah. And like, you know, be like, well, they're shitty or something. Which it goes against Ted's coaching life philosophy because like then yeah. his players would see him behaving like a child, essentially. Mm-hmm. And that that's not what he wants to coach. So what is Ted going to do in this Pred conference? That's what is what's going to happen here, sir? Well, someone asks him if he has a response to Nate's smack talk. And Ted just says he thought it was hilarious. And then he compliments Nate. Says, you know, he's a real good coach. Looking forward to what he's going to do this season. Wish him the best of luck. And um, he does get to a point where he's like, I am a little disappointed. You know, Nate could have done better. Like, there's a lot of material here. Like, I'm not a good coach. He could have used a dumb American joke. But, like, he didn't. And then he starts doing a, a, a bunch of bits where he's like, I'm so dumb. And they're supposed to respond with, how dumb are you? And then he does a joke. But that takes a little while to get them up to speed with the joke format. <laughs> And yeah, he just rips off that for a while and is the pleasant man he always is. The idea is that like Ted would have just stopped at complimenting Nate and saying how great of a coach he was. And that would have been the end of it. But then Mm -hmm. this extra bit of, okay, what is he going to do to satisfy Rebecca? And he amazingly comes up with this idea that in order to 
win the press conference against Nate. He's just going to make fun of himself better than Nate made, made, made fun yes. of him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which he does really, really and incredible, well. Incredible, <laughs> yeah. I wrote down I wrote down these uh, making fun of himself. Do you want to hear these? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Not all of them, but most of them. Here we go, ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like, is that really the best Nate could have done, though? Like, what? Like right there on the table, it's like, I'm a dumb American. <laughs> like, he didn't go in. He didn't say anything <laughs> like that. So he's like, I'm so dumb that the first time I heard y'all talking about Yorkshire pudding, I thought it was a fancy word y'all had for dog poop. <laughs> <laughs> or poupe, as they say. <laughs> yes, poupe. Dog poupe. <laughs> and then he said, I'm so dumb that whenever I text someone over here about money, I still spell pounds LBS. <laughs> nice. These are like really bad, like, yo mama <laughs> yeah yeah like pretty much. dad jokes almost mm-hmm. <laughs> but they're funny in the con- this context <laughs> yeah, he said yeah, i'm so bad at coaching football that i still get a chuckle every time someone talks about a handball foul by a handball <laughs> violation <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one mm-hmm. and then he says i look like ned flanders is doing cosplay as <laughs> ned flanders <laughs> which is very true <laughs> which is yeah it's all like actually true <laughs> Like, he's being totally honest. Uh, <laughs> that one was my favorite. That's that's, that's a good one. one, yeah. And then he says, uh, when I talk, it sounds like Dr. Phil hasn't gone through puberty yet. <laughs> <laughs> and then this this is like the moment where I, I kind of remembered all the panic attack stuff. Because mm-hmm. he mentions it. I don't yeah. know if he's over it, but I, I don't know. I guess I wasn't anticipating it being a big thing. Or I didn't remember it enough that I was remembering it. Mm. But uh, yeah, he even makes a joke. I forget what the joke was specifically, but he makes a joke about how he gets panic attacks. Yeah. And even crosses like that line. So like he's basically just out nated Nate and made fun of himself yeah. way more than Nate did. <laughs> There's nothing that Nate could come back with that would seem Yeah. Like, he, like, he like made fun anything of his panic that panic attacks. Like, <laughs> yeah. And and like basically like we we do cut to Nate and he's immediately on Twitter and Twitter is all like, Oh, Ted's amazing. Ted's so great. Like Ted looks great in this, and then Nate, like, looks petty for having made fun of them to begin with. Yeah, you know? he's seeing some, like, negative tweets about him now. Yes. Now that Ted kind of, like, outdid him in the press mm-hmm. conference. Yeah. Ted wins the press conference battle. So classy. <laughs> he did it his yes. way and still satisfied Rebecca's situation. So amazing. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. And Rebecca seems like, you know, the way... At first in the press conference, she's, like, not understanding what's happening. But then by the end, she's getting it. And it feels like, you know, she's back to trusting Ted, you know. Yeah. By the end of this episode. Like, we've got, there's not going to be a season-long conflict between Rebecca and Ted over her, like, obsession right. with Rupert. I think she will still have her obsession. But, it, yeah, there won't be a tension. She will yeah. trust Ted. She's going to trust Ted going forward. So that's that's the kind of stuff I love about this show. Yeah. It's great. Just dealt with. Yeah. That being said, let's get to some dumb stuff that happened in this episode. <laughs> okay. Oh, also, uh, Rupert does end up getting Nate a new car. Yes. He did have to talk demeaningly to him before he did it, but he does of get course. a new car. Got to keep up the appearance of the of the club, I think, more than anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. It has nothing to do about, like, giving a shit about Nate. It's just, you make me look bad in that piece of shit car. Have a different one. Nate also does get a text from his mom. And his mom tells him that his dad's upset that he swore on TV. What did he, he said shitty? Was that the swear word he said? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then she also says, but he'll get over it. And so, I don't know. I guess that's a good interaction with his family. It was a good thing to put on the show because it just like, it reminded me of like, oh yeah, his relationship with his dad is dumb. Like his dad's yeah. not mm-hmm. supportive. Yeah. His mom did use my least favorite emoji, which is that like winky, weird, twisty smile face that looks like it's a little too thirsty oh. and i don't like it i don't like it oh didn't even notice <laughs> Ugh, it's it's like the moist of emojis for me you know like i just don't i see it and i'm like oh uh, gross okay. uh, yeah. you'll have to show it to me <laughs> I don't actually know. <laughs> okay i have to send it to you more often i no. <laughs> oh what but when uh when nate goes out to his new car though he gets like <laughs> He gets like the badass, like Fast and Furious style music mm-hmm. as he's like driving away in his new car. Although, um, like I don't know if this theory that like whenever they play this music, it means like he's in he's in confident Nate mode because he does like an awkward la- wave up to the window because like Rupert's like looking yeah. out the window at the car in like a way that is is like non confident 
thing. So I think right. it was just like yeah. I think it's more the music is more of just like a funny contrast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, I don't I don't think it's indicative of when he's confident, but I think like it is representative of like the kind of confident he wants to be, whether or not he's doing it in the, the scene. Yeah, I agree. But okay, let's get to Roy and Keeley. It's time to have the talk with Roy's niece Phoebe. It is not the fun, awkward sex talk we thought we were we, we hoped we were gonna get. I was watching this with my wife, and as soon as like something about how they were framing the scene and basically like Phoebe's like they're letting her finish her ice cream. <laughs> like before dinner like yeah. she, is it before dinner is that what it is mm-hmm. yeah they gave her ice cream and they're just like kind of awkwardly standing in the kitchen until she's done and then she's like i'm done and i i said to i said to my wife i was like yeah they're bra- they're broken up or they're breaking yeah. up and yeah. they're about to tell phoebe like this is not the sex talk <laughs> yep. so the way they framed this was like okay and it took them till this moment in the first episode of the season to have them both in a scene together it's like yeah yeah true yeah so the talk is that they're telling Phoebe that they're breaking up well there's like some small distinction that's important here where Keely says that they're going on a break and Roy says that they broke up and then when she asks which is it he reinforces they broke up and she asks why and he's just like because we're so busy that's that, that's the weird reason because she has her own company and he has extra work because Nate quit and they're just too busy yeah um in terms of the end goal of the show like Keely and Roy are going to be together in the end, right? This isn't like a yeah. We're transitioning I, I would hope to new so. relationships for the sake of yeah. newness, right? Right. This is my guess. I think this is kind of a dumb drama moment, and mm. hopefully, it wraps up sooner than later. But my guess is that like Roy just thinks he's not good enough. There's going to be like something he doesn't feel good enough, or he feels yeah. like he every time he spends with Keely, like he's taking her away from her job. Mm-hmm. And her job, he like has just decided that Keeley's job is more important than him. Or like, it's like something from Roy's side that he, yeah, but he's doing it out of love for her is like going to be like the end thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so they'll just like eventually they're going to talk about it and get back together. That's what I think. But this is like, yeah, this is setting up to be like stupid drama. In my, well, opinion. I think it stems from in last season there was a photo shoot that she had and they wanted him to be there for some of the photos yeah and he makes a comment at some point where he's like look at her she's fantastic she doesn't need me in these photos like there's no reason for me to be in this photo shoot like she is sufficient she is amazing she is enough on her own Mm -hmm. um and that is like i think the vibe that is pulling through with him where he's just like i'm gonna get in the way of her being amazing and i don't want to stop that what you're saying might be also true but i think what actually happens is I don't know if he says what you said, but I think what actually happens is they do the photo shoot. And then when they release the magazine, they actually took Roy out of the pictures. Yeah, it's it's both of those things. Oh, he he says it in advance. He says, I don't know if he said it in advance. He said it at some point. Okay. Either way, though, like, to me, this is, if this is what it's going to end up being, it's like they're having a fight because Roy isn't able to communicate what he believes is going Mm -hmm. on and doesn't want to. Because he like doesn't want to pressure her into staying yeah. with him. I don't know. It seems like it's. Dumb. I don't even. Think, it seems like they should just talk and be fight. fine. Like I don't think there's fighting happening. I think it's he's pulling away and allowing the busyness of their schedule to put more space between them. And then they, I think they talked about it like reasonable adults and decided to break up. But like he's not being, you know, super truthful about his reasoning. I was gonna say there's even a moment here where like Roy is talking. Uh, they're. Okay, this what's great about this scene is that Phoebe in this scene is like acting like the audience and she's mm-hmm. like asking a bunch of good questions being like why are you breaking up? And then they're like, "Oh, we're busy." And she's like, "Oh, well, but you were busy before." And then they're like trying to justify it and they're like, "Well, Keely has her own business now and Roy is trying to like and I have to do more work now that Nate's not on the team." And then Keely actually like is like supportive of Roy in the moment. Mm-hmm. Is like, hey, if you're like you're worried, you're not good enough. Like you're not going to be as good as Nate, but you're like you'll be fine. Like he's trying, she's trying to support him, but then he like stares at her and she like shuts up, <laughs> as if like I I don't know what they talk about between seasons. I don't mm. know what we're gonna get out of this. Oh, for me, it felt like she pulled back where she was like, it's no longer my place to be the person who reassures him. I didn't. I guess take yeah, it as he true. store her down to or was staring down at her to stop. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But I, I love, uh, I love Phoebe in this scene. I oh think. yeah, she's basically because she's saying everything that I'm thinking. Well, then, like even at the end, again being like the most adult, she's like, "Well, okay, I get it. It makes sense. You were only dating for a year, and you know, not a lot of relationships can withstand a career, major career changes, let alone <laughs> yeah. two. So, sure, it's fine." And it's like, when did you become like a 30 something year old therapist child? And then this is this is a great Phoebe right here. She mm-hmm. says she was like, yeah, like my parents split up when I was four years old. And then she yeah. says and then she says, so one of my core beliefs is that nothing lasts forever. <laughs> and I was like, damn, Phoebe, you got them good. Phoebe got yep. them good with that one. <laughs> Roy's face is like, oh, my God, what have I done to this child? <laughs> Yep. Phoebe's character is like she's just like dunking on them and like potentially probably like she's gonna be like the manipulator that like gets them back mm. together is like the cute idea of this story I think yeah well right after the scene there he's in the car with her and she's like she asked him if he he's doing if he thinks he's doing the right thing and he's not sure and she's just like well I think you're being stupid yep that's exactly how I feel <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but that right there tells me that the show is going to put them back together. Yeah, like, that I like that self-aware. Like, Phoebe is the self-awareness of the show that's, like, letting me know that, like, they know this is stupid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. It's like, okay. I'm hoping, like, you know, episode two, episode three of the season, like, this, <laughs> this whatever this is, is just done. <laughs> I don't know. It might take longer than that, but I think the reason it'll be okay, it's because they just won't see each other for a while. Like, it won't be, like, them having tension episode to episode. It'll just be... Mm, they'll be doing their okay. own thing for a little while okay maybe yeah Are, would you just be fine with the show if the if keely and roy were just a cute couple who supported each other for all in it forever <laughs> always and forever and that was the show yeah yeah i like okay. nice things that's I how i like feel nice too things. i don't need this i don't need this drama <laughs> in the show <laughs> but i also like i respect it for it being like a very grown-up sort of breakup you know like nobody's hating each other they're like talking reasonably like like Yes, there's value in sort of displaying that you know kind of in the sense that like okay at least we don't just sit through them like yelling at each other for no reason mm-hmm. or for our, like what seems like a dumb thing or like whatever it is yeah, but yeah. it's it's also like childish in a way of like okay you're two people who love each other and now you're busy like phoebe's asking and why does that equate to you can't love each other anymore it doesn't actually make sense like mm-hmm. you can just if you're both busy people, it's not like you have time to date anybody else either. So just, well, <laughs> just they're both... be busy together and be a couple. It doesn't matter. It, it, well, there is, I think there is something that warrants, like if both people are equally busy and their free time doesn't line up, then that means they literally can't see each other ever. Yes. But it's also not like grounds to have to officially be like, yeah, we're breaking up and we're going to tell our niece <laughs> that it's official. Well, I mean, like, like... You know? <laughs> If I was dating someone and like a month went by and I like we were we, we couldn't find time to see each other, I'd be like, well, this this is problematic. Either we have to do a better job at scheduling, or this isn't gonna work. You know? You think so? I don't know. Yeah, I think if you're you're so busy that you literally cannot find time to to like be with each other, like how how is that a relationship? You never see each other. I guess, but you're not in a relationship with anybody else either. So I would know. I would just be like, man, it sucks that we can't see each other more often. But like, if you were in a relationship with someone who like had nothing going on then they could conform to your free time and you would be able to see them i know no but i'm in the scenario where like two people have had a long enough relationship that they love each other and that they just like can't see each other because of busyness i feel Mm -hmm. like you can just be like acknowledge that hey it sucks that we can't see each other but i'm still glad you're part of my life and it's okay if we don't like (laughs) if we can't hang out that often it's okay but I, i mean i can see both ways being valid like you could be like it sucks that we can't see each other and this like really isn't enough for me. And that being a valid reason to not continue. I don't think like that's not entirely the reason why Roy is breaking up with her. It's because he doesn't think he's good enough and he's going to like get in the way of her doing great things. So he's allowing this busyness excuse to like be the reason. Yeah. It's all dumb though. <laughs> to, yeah. to me, to me, you know, this, <laughs> like, this is, this is dumb drama, but we'll see. Maybe they justify it. I have a feeling they're not going to because they allowed Phoebe to all already acknowledge that it's stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to fix this by the end of the season. Uh, I, if it takes all season, it's stupid. <laughs> I'll, tell, I'll say that right now. 
Okay. Maybe there's no time for romance this season because it's going to be so fast paced. Maybe, you know, we have to watch Nate spit a lot or something. Maybe season you know? three is going to be a whole different experience. <laughs> <laughs> no, I need it to yeah. still be my favorite show. Okay, we'll see. Still a great show, but I'm going to yeah. you know, mm-hmm. talk about how great this show is for doing things I love. When they go against the things I love, I have to, I have to <laughs> say right. it's not good. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. And then the last scene we get is Ted back at his apartment. Well, he's walking home with Beard, right? Yeah. And he does bring up this question again of like, do you ever wonder why we're here? You know, like, yeah. talking like about should London. we still be here? Yeah. Yeah. And that does not go into depth, but like he is voicing this. It's just, it's establishing Ted's new mindset. I, cause to me, this is a new mindset, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay. okay, yeah. And then he calls his son because his son flight got back to the US. Mm-hmm. And they have a good conversation, but then it ends with basically the his son is showing him a cool new gift he got, which is actually the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> Thanos' yes. is Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> um, and he's like, Jake gave it to me. And Ted's like, oh, that's so cool. Who's Jake? Who's Jake? And then Jake's like, Mo- he's like mom's new friend. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, you yeah. just like trying to hold in that pain for a little while longer to finish this conversation with his son yeah is rough there's also a weird part about this conversation with his son where like like he in the episode he's talking about he doesn't know why he's there right Mm -hmm. but then when he's talking to his son he's like he says to his son like hey you know that i would only be away from you if i if it was something important and he says to his son like you know that right and like you, you know why I'm here in the London, basically. And his son's like, and yeah, he's like, you got to win the, win the whole thing, yeah. yeah. But Ted is almost like asking his son, so that his son can tell him why he's there, because he himself doesn't know why he's there. <laughs> it's like really yeah. weird, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so everybody, everybody wants him to win, but he, I guess, that we're supposed to feel like, okay, Ted, winning isn't what's motivating Ted to stay. Yeah, winning has never been what he cared about the most. Yeah, there is something motivating Ted to say, but Ted like can't put his finger on it necessarily. Yeah. And you know what it is? Now that I'm thinking about it's it. It's to fix Nate. It's Dr. Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we did see her with clearly uh, other people right now. Like she's she's seeing somebody. So I don't But was know. that just to establish that she was a person? who participated in romantic interactions because I mean, that's that, fair. that was not an established character side of her. That's true. That's true. Maybe they're, they're slowly building this relationship up. Okay. <laughs> Is that the reason he can't put his finger on now? Now that I say it out loud, I don't know. No, 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 no. You don't it's, think so? <laughs> he, he's got to fix Nate. That's why he's here. Fix Nate. He's got to yeah. stay to fix Nate. Bring I Nate guess. home. And then, and then, and then, he can hand off the team to Nate and go home. Ooh. That's how I feel it might end. And, you know. Uh, Nate would have to do a lot of growing up real fast yeah. for that to make sense to me. Well, we don't know if there's a fourth season or if it's the season, but yeah. That seems like a lot to happen in one season. No, I'm calling it now. That's the way this ends. Nate comes okay. home, takes over Richmond, and then Ted Lasso goes. You think goes it's home. even if that's season three, that's how it ends? Yeah. So Nate gets fired from. West Ham. No, no, he has to leave on purpose. You know, he has to reject. He has to. He has to be told to sweep the leg or whatever the football version of that is, and be like, "No, I will not do it. I am better than this. I care about people. Okay, I'm leaving." And then he can go back. And then you're saying, like, maybe right before the big game, Ted will like resign as head coach. No, no, I think no, 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 no. (laughs) Ted will do the big game. But for the following season, the team will go to Nate. Oh, so you, we'll get a, we'll get a little like, like, the, like the yada yada wrap up of the show. It's yes, like, okay. yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I can see that. They could just be like five years later. Nate is mature <laughs> enough to run the team now. <laughs> Suddenly, he doesn't have gray hair again because he's not evil anymore. Yeah, feels like Roy would be a lot better as the main head coach <laughs> at this stage, <laughs> right? Yeah, because like. Players respect him. He can be a hard ass, but, you know, if players have problems, he can also solve them. He's mature enough to do that. <laughs> or they're the perfect partnership, you know? The two of them work together. They got it all covered. <laughs> two head coaches, Sarah. Groundbreaking. Yeah. Sure. Why not? Uh, all righty. Um, yeah. 
I'm so glad this show is back. Yes. Are there 10 episodes, I think? There are going to be 12 episodes this season. <gasps> Dang. We're going to get a weird one. <laughs> season one had 10, season two had 12. Oh, did it? Season three is 12. I thought it was eight. That's what 10, I'm looking 12. at okay. right now. But I will take your word for it. Plenty of time to fix everything. I can do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Uh, Sarah, what are we talking about next time? Uh, Next time, we are going back to... Uh, <laughs> the same thing we said we're transit. talking about next time on their last episode. Yeah, yeah. Transit Love 2, Episode 4, right? Yeah, we're going to continue with Transit Love 2, which Episode 4 is what's next. Yeah, we don't have anything planned as far as like special episodes like this with talking about shows that are like actively releasing. Um, I don't have anything on my schedule right now that I'm really raring to talk about. Yeah, I'm not sure either, but you know, something might come up a little spontaneous. If it's like a show we both like and we want to talk about it and it's coming out, might as well do a podcast episode about it. Yeah. And we'll try not to interrupt the flow of whatever else we're talking about at the time, but <laughs> you know. We gotta mix it up sometimes. <laughs> Things are gonna happen, you know. But we'll 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 keep going. Transit Love Two. We'll see what happens there too. We'll yeah. We'll get into it. We gotta get to some goddamn dates on that show, you know. <laughs> <laughs> gotta happen soon. Maybe. Look at a brand new cast now. I don't know. Well, That's true. Yeah. All righty. Where can people contact us, Sarah? People can email us at keepwatchingpod at gmail dot com. Tweet at us at keepwatchingpod. Instagram at us at keepwatchingpod. Leave a comment under this video on YouTube, also at Keep Watching Pod. And if you would like to talk to us about your feelings like a reasonable adult, you can leave <laughs> yes. us a rating or review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Yeah. Yeah. Listener comments so far, I, I would say, have all been reasonable adult comments, right? Yeah. I just really want someone to write an Apple review. It hasn't happened yet, and I'm just desperately waiting <laughs> for the day. That's all. I feel like somebody might have like really shit on one of my Singles Inferno opinions on YouTube or something. <laughs> but it was so long ago, and I don't know if that listener like came back. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's impossible to tell. Unless, if you remember, if you were if you're out there and still listening to this, <laughs> or, uh, it was you, one where it's and like... you shit on one of my comments. Let us know <laughs> that it you're was still just listening. One that was like your take on maybe it was the fight pit is like totally not what everybody else oh no is no anybody whether, who commented on that was else? was was perfectly fine somebody i don't even remember what it was but yeah i think somebody really shit on one of my comments <laughs> <laughs> they didn't shit on it they just didn't agree with you <laughs> no 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 people have disagreed with me and it's like clearly they're being respectful but there was one person <laughs> Okay. That was like you're fucking stupid. I don't know if they said. Oh, no. I don't know if they said those words exactly, but you could tell like it was some. They were they were they, judging they my intelligence. <laughs> okay. I don't know what it was. If you feel like you were that person, <laughs> let us know. This is a weird I promise. Call out. I promise. I'm not. I'm not actually upset. <laughs> we're all good. All righty. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye. Bye.